for this demonstration we're going to make a dream catcher we're going to need pretty much a bit of everything you've got in your kit really um we're using the 0.6 to make our gizmo coil we've got the 0.8s run, running through it um to give it the structure uh we've got the the marker site marquees and we've got the carnelian and the smoky quartz uh, forming the feathery bits then we've got um, point eight making your connections and your jump rings we've got the um, sodalite in the middle um, on, on a bed of 0.8 rings and then we've got the point six forming the the web part of it so let's get started now put that over here so we're going to start off in the middle and I've made a split ring with the point 0.8 and I've used your ring mandrel to get that size. Now this works out at about an S. It, when you make it, do your jump rings a good 3-4 smaller, then it will open and you can slide it down to whatever size you want. So it doesn't really matter what size, it just dictates the, the centre. I've kind of sized that because I want 8. I'll pull this in slightly. Um, I want the 8 in the middle because we've got the 8 points going round. So it just makes it easier and gives you a, 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 an easy way of getting an even distribution. Okay, so slide your 8 uh, soda light onto some point 0.4. Uh, you've got plenty of point 0.4 so don't stint on it then we're going to just cross them over I'm going to pop that through and I just want to make sure that they're going to be secure so cross them over so that that's now fixed uh, pull that one through and we're going to stitch these onto our ring so we're going to go underneath the ring between the next two underneath the ring and you're just going between each of the beads all the way around catching that uh, jump ring underneath so we're going to go nearly there and you can if you want go back the other way you might find it's slightly smaller I'm because I'm further over that side there we go, we're going to keep going round till we get back to the beginning. Now, like I say, it, it, it's up to you whether you then go in the opposite direction with the other end of your point four. But I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So we're going to come back to the middle, finish off my wire by looping through a couple of times and then trimming it off. Okay, so there's our central ring. This is a great technique. I'm just going to wire that through a couple of times as well. And then I can finish this end off so that it won't get in the way. Okay, I'm going to leave that one on. There's a reason for that. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, so this actually makes quite a nice, very simple little brooch that you can do um, if you... If you um, take your 0.8 and have a, a bit left over, you can actually make quite a nice little brooch. You can do all sorts of things with this. It's a nice starting point for a lot of things, but it's going to be the centre of our um, um, dream catcher. So now we want four of the marquee. So these are all prep bits we can do beforehand. Um, I've used the 0.8. The 0.8 goes through nicely, loop at each end. And then we want some jump rings, whether you make them, in which case you're going to need a pair of um, bailing pliers. I would get a six step one. If you haven't already and you can get a six step one, it gives you all the different options. I've used them on the third one, that one, to do those. We also want some larger jump rings while you're in the jump ring mood to attach our feather parts to the main process. And that's around that one. And as you can see, they always ease a little bit. So you want three of those and you're going to need several of the smaller jump rings. And then you want to make for your feathery tassel bits. So you want nine of the smaller um, finishing bits with the with the smoky quartz on. And I've popped these on some head pins and just done a wrap loop at the top. 
try and keep them all even-ish but again it, it's an organic thing so they don't have to be perfect and then the carnelian what I've done is I've done two smaller ones on the outside and a longer one on the middle so you do get this tapering so you need six of the shorter ones three of the longer ones and nine of the smoky quartz we're then going to start with the main frame so I've got about a 10 inch gizmo coil this is using the um 0.6 and I've used the uh, professional gizmo tooler um, and the second narrowest of the mandrels. So we're then going to take off about a meter and a half of your 0.8. I've left it in a coil and we're going to feed on. So it's, it's kind of a very, very loose um, spiral and we're just going to feed on our coil now i'm going to feed it through again and this is what's going to give you that extra structure until it comes out so you can see it automatically starts going into a circle so if we pull those tight now this one's slightly smaller than the other one it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever when you get to the top we're going to just use our flat nose pliers i'm going to bend that one up first Pull them so that they're together and then bend the other one up. So we've got our circle sorted. So tie these off. You don't need that full length. So I'm just going to trim these wires back. Use these parts for, for doing your, your um, jump rings, for making clasps, all sorts of things like that. Don't throw those away. They're very important. Um, and then we're going to use a little piece of the 0 0.4 just to secure around here. So I just want those to sit temporarily together. OK, so we've got our circle. Now, again, like I say, I, I, I didn't worry too much about having this absolutely precisely circular um, and I didn't worry some of these on the on the main piece it's slightly off center you quite often see that so I've, I've decided I decided not to worry too much that these are going to be slightly different lengths like I say you can take it to that and you could also do these as woven pieces in which case you would very much be able to dictate how big those were but I did want to sort of secure this so I'm going to get some more 0.4 and we're just going to secure this roughly into the middle. It will flex and move, so don't worry too much, but you want it roughly in place. So I'm going to go clockwise around, just attach it, and I'm attaching it at the nine o'clock, three o'clock, um, six o'clock and 12 o'clock positions. Or northeast, southwest. Okay, so we're just going to fetch that around, back through there. Like I say, I've kept it quite organic, quite loose. I'm just going to pop that up through there because you don't worry about this looking a mess because you're going to remove these wires afterwards. They're literally just to hold it in the place while you're starting off, and then we're going to go through there. OK, so we've got it roughly fixed into position. So that gives us a starter for 10 to, to, to go around. Now we're going to take our 0.6. Now you want a good couple of metres. So it will become a bit unwieldy, but don't worry about it. But you want a couple, probably about two metres. So now we're, so now we're going to fill in the centre bit. And as you go around, we're doing eight round the outside but every third bead on the inside, so it kind of moves it on one each time. So we're going to go from the centre, wrap it a couple of times round the top to secure it, your 0.6, feed your wire through, and back up the other side. So then we're going to head down to sort of our, uh, that's 3 o'clock, so, so about 7.30, and we're going to go through there, pop it up through. Then we're going to take it all the way round again to secure it in that point. 
so watch out for kinks developing then we're going to come round so every third one two three so we want that point opposite the middle bead there we go then we're going to go back through there pull it through So I will put up the pattern for this so you can see it uh, a bit easier um, onto Facebook and I'll try and attach it to, to um, this demo. So we now want to come over, so bear in mind we've got one, two, three, so we want to be opposite that one. Okay, already I've pulled it out of centre but I, like I say I don't worry about that these days. So I'm going to go around through there and keep going around until you've attached them. So you will actually end up back at the start. So one, two, three, we're going in that one. There we go. And out. So now we're going, we've got back to the top, but we're not at the start because we've only got two beads in. So we want to actually come past there one, two, so we're coming opposite that bead and we're going to do our loop in here and so forth until we've got to all of them and we've actually ended up back here at the start. So one, two, three, so we're going back around that one. So that's in there. I love the fact that when you're making these they do actually become a bit organic um because of the way that they're, they're they're sizing and like i say if you can get past that which for for someone like me is quite tough um and you can see how this pattern starts building up through here and you start getting these crisscrosses happening so you keep going around and trust me it will look like this and then when you get to the to the top you're going to wrap the last one a couple of times round that that uh, shank and then taking the 0.8 wires we're just going to use our bailing pliers to do a loop that we can hang it from taking those two wires and then wrap those around a couple of times to form that shank now whether you have it sort of side to side or front to back is your choice trim off all your wires trim off your 0.4 and feed that back out be careful not to trim the wires that are actually attaching your beads in the middle and then you will end up with your dream catcher.